Are you or is your profile good enough for a top tier MBA school? In short, unless you are a complete douche, meaning you care very little for others, you have more talk than you walk, and you're just not a nice person to be around, then yes, you are good enough to get into a top tier MBA school. And we'll dissect that in a minute, that substance. The other challenge then is, how good are you at communicating it? And that doesn't start with writing your essay or preparing for interviews. It starts with making deliberate choices in your career, in your life, that serve as evidence for the caliber, for the type of person that you are. Now, are you genuinely good enough? Let's take a walk. The dynamic of business school is that it is a marketplace for sharing in, in knowledge, in talent, and in ideas. And if you think of what makes other marketplaces effective, like Amazon's third-party marketplace, uh, eBay, AliExpress, it's about the quality of the product, the ease of the transaction, possibly even the returns, and that then culminating in positive reviews. And business schools are no different. They are looking to provide a top tier education, both in terms of the curriculum, as well as the, the teaching staff. Um, they're looking to host smooth transactions amongst the, uh, the, the students, the staff, and at the end, future employers. And they're looking to earn top reviews directly. This is what my experience was like. This is how much money I made coming out of the school. And indirectly building a reputation for having outstanding individuals who drive impact coming out of that school. Bringing this back to you, will you be receptive to the core product they are engaged in? Will you be able to keep up with the academic rigor? Will you be able to participate and contribute in a way that others in your class can benefit from your questions, challenges, and ideas? To that extent, you can certainly produce a track record of academic excellence, your grades from previous schooling, etc. Or you focus on making that point in other ways. Your interest in a variety of topics, how you've pursued that evidence for continuous learning, perhaps even how you've shared that with and taught others, which is the ultimate testimony for getting into a new subject and engrossing yourself in it. My grades in undergrad were abysmal. I barely got by in part because I didn't have my priorities straight. I wasn't really interested in what I was studying or didn't see it for the purpose it meant to play. However, I was also invested in so many other things. I worked at radio stations. I started my own production company. So this isn't about some elite academic performance per se. That, that is merely a, an established way of demonstrating your thinking and doing in relation to more abstract concepts. But it ultimately communicates a point that can also be made in other ways. Show me evidence that you can operate out of your intellectual comfort zone, that you can grasp and run with foreign concepts, even to the point of challenging them, and then apply those concepts that they could have real life impact. Go. Real life. Real life doesn't happen alone now, does it? It happens with others. It happens with people you like, people who are like you. And more often than that, with people who are not like you and with people you might not like. But the true challenge of life is to move forward, to not be held back by setbacks, to not have disagreement or discomfort bring you to a still stand. And especially in a pressure cooker environment like business school, will you find a way to navigate or mitigate the circumstances that are not ideal and will you progress nevertheless? This is also what is called maturity. And most don't actually have it, very often including myself. But I'll tell you, I'm special because I'm not one to easily fit in. And I don't mean in a shit-stirring confrontational manner where I must be heard, but I'm not good with bullshit. I'm not good with we're going to do it this way because we've always done it this way. And that makes me, to some extent, sometimes a bit slow because I observe and I think a lot, but it also sets me up for an awesome superpower when it kicks in to see more or see things differently than what most people see. And my year at INSEAD forced me to make that work with and for others. I became the guy and I didn't expect that who everybody would talk to, who would not have a problem interacting with anybody. And it seemed like people valued my opinion and at the same time my commitment to the group dynamic. So I wasn't doing my own thing. I had an opinion, but I made sure that it would feed into something bigger than myself. And even as I'm reflecting on this now, that actually started 
years and jobs before. I guess another way of saying that is that I had evidence of that unique viewpoint or perspective, which by the way, doesn't mean it's always right or even better, while at the same time being part and feeding into a larger group or team dynamic. Factually, I had been working on so many company firsts at the agencies I was working for, a lot of ambiguity, a lot of holding the momentum together, and I could talk about these examples. Again, in the face of adversity or mounting friction, do you retract? and freeze, or even with a reset, you collect yourself and move forward with purpose. Because then you can give to others more than you take. Then you can be useful. And lastly, let's not forget, a business school is only as good as the reputation of its alumni once they have left the school. In other words, can your name and reputation serve as an extension of the school's image? And this then comes down to the vision or idea you may have for post-MBA, if you just want to make a shit ton of money so you can buy all kinds of crap and be a baller and tell other people what to do, you're nothing special. Nobody gives a shit about you. But the moment you make a lot of money because what you do or produce helps other people, that is a sweet spot. And taking this even further, if you arrive at a point where you enrich other people's lives, where you can lift someone out of poverty and at the same time you either don't care about the things you own or you don't care to prove anything to anybody else, then you will have made it. And you are bigger than yourself or the things that you own. Achievement is to be bigger than yourself in spite of dot, dot, dot. And if you have a vision, not even a plan, but a dream for how that might play itself out, then ultimately your narrative, your story lends itself to being retold and shared. And then the question comes up, where did that person go to school? Where did they in part learn about themselves in that way? And the answer should be that school. Well, then it must be good. I'd argue more or less, you probably have most of that substance already, especially if you don't fit some TV glorified Ivy League undergrad, high academia playing golf with so-and-so background. You need to take your ambition, your thirst, your in spite of, and here's where I see myself impacting the lives of others. You need to craft that into a narrative that goes almost as far as saying, even if I don't get into this school, that is no reflection of my self-worth of what I can do in this world. I'm looking for the tools to accomplish that and I believe your schools has it. And perhaps your school doesn't see a fit right now and you will not accept my application, which means I will get that toolbox that could supercharge my abilities either at a different point or in some other way. Let me make this clear. Getting into a top tier MBA school is a massive validation of how good you are. It serves as a signal that someone else sees that value in you. But it is that value that you recognized in yourself and then communicated in the first place. It's a reflection of what you already see in yourself. And if you doubt that or you approach this in a lackluster way, but perhaps hoping that someone else will see a spark of uh, genius that you have no conviction in, then you're not really in it, and you're not good enough. You may be good enough for so and so many other things in life, which we haven't spoken about here. But relationships, employers, business schools, all of them follow a specific model for what they need and what they're looking for to address that need. And if you can put check marks next to those activities and a few results on meeting those needs, then be damn clear about communicating that because you're already good enough.